Hello and welcome to this video tutorial in creating sectional site diagrams in Rhino. We'll be following on from the video looking at creating plan diagrams in Rhino using OS data and building height data downloaded from Digimaps. This will be looking at using this 3D height data and using it in combination with clipping planes in Rhino to create a series of site sections that we can then turn into diagrams in Illustrator. Now to do this we're just going to set up a clipping plane on this right hand view here to create a section for our model. So we're going to select the right viewport, type in clipping plane and just draw out a rectangle which will be our clipping plane in that model. Now when you do this your objects might completely disappear like they have in my view here and the reason for that is that this clipping plane is now clipping the whole model so we can't see it anymore. If you look at the clipping plane in the top view, you'll see it has a line going perpendicular to the clipping plane face. And that line represents the direction in which we're looking into the clipping plane. So it's clipping everything on the right hand side of this plane here. So if I start to move it backwards in plan, and if you look in the right hand view, you'll notice that the model starts to be exposed as we move that clipping plane through. So it cuts different parts of the model. You can, in the properties menu, under the object type with the clipping plane selected under clipping plane you can turn on which views the clipping plane cuts so if i put it on perspective you can see as i move it through it will cut that perspective object as we go through the model as well so you can see it working there so let's just keep it just to the right hand view for now and we're going to line up a couple of sections for us to work with so let's try this first one through here and with that selected we're then going to select the model in the right hand view and we're going to use make 2D to turn that into a sectional drawing. So we type in make 2D, make sure it's in the right hand view, make sure it maintains the source layers and you can click, we can click off the viewpoint rectangle for now and we'll just go OK. And what that would do is it will make a 2D drawing from our right hand view. And if we just move that up and out the way of our model, you'll see there what we have our 2D drawing. Now, I've actually, let's go back a couple because I accidentally moved the clipping plane with it there. So let's deselect that clipping plane and make sure we just move that geometry. So we're gonna do this a couple of times. So we've got the first section there and we're just gonna move this through the model. And let's do one from this point here and we'll do the same again. Select make 2D view. And it might be that you have a kind of specific places that you want to do your section cuts, showing the kind of different aspects of the site at different levels. So it's good to kind of think of these before you start doing this. So you can kind of use the clipping plane to take key readings from your site at these different levels. And we'll do one from here too. There we go. So now I'm just going to open up this top view so we can see these. Now, because we maintain the source layers, what this does is when it does a make 2D, you'll notice it makes a series of make 2D layers here where all these lines are contained in. And this is really useful for us to start to split out these lines into its key layer types. So to start with, we want to sort of separate out the section line from the rest of our elevation lines, and that's this clipping plane line here. So if I turn this on and off, you'll see that some of the lines, yeah, it's quite hard to see, but turn on and off with it. And this is our main section line. So what we want to do is we want to select these lines. And as we've set up our layers and line weights previously, we can select these objects and we can drop them into our section thick line type to give these an automatic line weighting on that object and you'll see there all the section lines are contained within it now because we've downloaded this information from an online source it might be that your lines aren't perfect and there are a bit there's some bits are missing and some bits have the block so you might need to tidy these up later and we can look at doing that we'll probably do that in illustrator because we'll be setting up these diagrams in illustrator as well for the rest of these lines, 
we're just going to select the building ones, select objects, and we're going to drop these into one of our elevation lines, layers. Let's do it in elevation mid there as well. So now we've got our heavy line weight and our elevation. We've also got this sort of baseline here, and I'm actually just going to leave that in the layer it's in for now because we don't, it might be our section line, it might not, but we can draw that in later as well. So that's our basic sections and we've got our kind of thicker line weight there as well. So let's set up a new view for this as well. We'll just use the one we've previously done so we can see that and we'll make sure it's at scale as well in our detail page and let's do it at 1 to 2000 for this because that'll be quite big. Like so. And we'll just make sure we've got the print display on so we can have a look and see what line weights are coming out there as well. Make sure that's turned on for this particular one. And you can see there our section lines now have got a heavier line to it. So here you can quite clearly see as well where the lines are kind of overlapping and we're getting extra bits of geometry. So this is one thing about downloading the data and I always recommend tidying up your 3D models before you do stuff like this that you can remove some of these lines so it isn't as complex but for the time being this will kind of work for what we need to do so what we're going to do now is we're going to tidy this up in illustrator and turn these into a series of simple sectional diagrams so i'm just going to go right click again and print this out as a pdf and we're going to open it up in illustrator just like we did with our previous plan drawing So these are our plan ones and let's open up our new sectional drawing as well. And we'll just drop that into the top bar again. So there we have our sectional drawing. Now as you can see we've got a lot of sort of extra information. So what I'm probably going to do with this is like before we're going to select our background lines and just make sure if you've got a clipping frame you might need to kind of isolate it cut it and paste it in again just like we did with the plan and I'm going to select all my background elevation lines just using select similar and we're going to just copy and paste these onto a new layer called elevation like so And that's going to be at the back. Now with this layer one I'm actually not going to use this and I'm just going to redraw over it using this template because of the lines and there's kind of slightly missing a few lines and they're not perfectly joined up it will be more work in tidying up and deleting lines as it would be just redrawing the outline which is the main sort of section line I need for these diagrams. So what I'm going to do with these is we're just going to make a new layer call this section and we're going to draw out this section line using the pen tool. Now I'm going to make this a red colour so I can quite clearly see it as I draw it and we can change it later. We'll just make it a 0.1 size. And because I've only done my diagram up to here, we're going to start our section line here. And we're just going to trace around the outline of our buildings, snapping onto the points like so. Trying to get some of these sort of shapes as well into it. down to there and so it goes a little bit at the pavement and then slightly lower for the road up and around and we're just doing the outline of these buildings because it's the section line we want remember this is just for a diagram for the section for the time being and we can always go back and tidy up the 3d model later and we'll do it a bit lower here and then we'll drop it back up there. so that's the first one and I'm just going to go around and I'm going to do that for the other two diagrams as well so now I've drawn out those outlines for each of these three diagrams what we can now do is we can get rid of our section line which we've had and we can now we're just left with this a lot cleaner outline of our site what we can also do with this is if we take the pen tool again and take the kind of last couple of points on the line and I'm just going to draw around and make it into a box so it joins the line up 
And with that now joined, we can actually add a fill color. I'm just gonna fill it in white. And what that would do is it will fill off any of those lines below our section, which we shouldn't be able to see and make it into a kind of group like so. So we can just do that. And this is especially true for this kind of object where we can see all these extra lines in the middle of our building, which we might not want. So we can just go around, join it up, and then make the fill white. And very quickly, you can start to see it cleans up the drawing a lot there as well. Okay, so quite quickly now we've set up these sort of basic sections in a row and each of these are kind of cut through our plan as well. So we can start to really clearly see the kind of base level of a series of diagrams we could set up from this. Um, it might be as well that you want to tidy up these elevation lines might be not might not want all these extra lines which I think are some curved parts of the building which sometimes form this. Um, for this particular diagram I'm not going to worry too much but I'm just going to make the line weight a bit less. Let's set it to 0.15. Oops, sorry, 0.15. So it's a bit thinner. And we're going to change our section line to just a black section line there as well. Um, sometimes with diagrams you can actually get away with doing slightly thicker section lines than you normally would to make it quite bold and clear sort of what you're trying to show in that as well. So that could be the kind of base of our diagram and there's lots of sort of overlays you can do with this as well. So just for the last part of this tutorial we're just going to look at doing a couple of simple kind of diagrammatic overlays onto this. Um, I'm going to start just by, as we did before, setting up some boards for this and we're just going to do some smaller and we're just going to crop it so we don't get that kind of extra bit of the section in there as well like so so i've skipped ahead here and set up our boards for each three of these sections and we can start adding on extra levels of information and other details onto this now so just like with the plan i'm going to quickly draw on my site boundary let's say my site might roughly be of sat here behind this building. Just using the pen tool again just to draw out that site boundary from there. I pretty much use the pen tool for any drawing work on top of extra lines in Illustrator because it's the most intuitive tool for that. Um, we could also show how the building shadows affect this in 2D. Um, what I might do for this is if we work out that we want to kind of 45 degree if you hold down your um, shift key when you're drawing a line it will lock that at 45 degrees and what we can do I'm going to make this line blue so we can see it and I'm going to remove the dash just in the stroke column up here and then I'm going to copy this over to this building here to give me my sort of angle of my shadow and then using the scissors tool we can just trim that line shorter from there so that's where my kind of shadow is going to be and we can then use the pen tool to finish that shape so we just connect from one end trace around the edge of my site and you don't have to be exact with this because we can actually use the site section to overlap this shape so that's the first one and what this will give us is just a kind of sectional shadow layer here and if we just flip the line and the fill around using this little cursor we then get our fill color let's make this a kind of darkish blue I'm gonna keep it quite faint so there and then we can lower the opacity down so we can see how my shadow might start affecting my proposal and like I said, we can drop that layer below my section layer. So the edges are hidden below the line. So it looks nice and neat on there as well. So there you can see that that shape is hidden behind my section line there as well. So quite quickly, we can start to build up more information onto these drawings. And that was two very sort of quick moves to add shadows, add a site boundary onto there. We can copy these kind of ideas for this piece as well and once you've drawn one of these shadows because they sit behind the section line if we copy it we can actually just drop it below 
And you might have to tidy up a few of those lines just using the white cursor tool this time just to adjust those points because it doesn't matter if it sits behind there because we can't see it anyway and anything off the frame remember it won't be exported same with these we can scale it up if you just scale it uniformly it will hold that angle to it as well So, so, and also if you've um, previously set up your sections so they all align as well, you can do this. We can take our site boundary, copy it from one artboard and paste in place on the next one. And then we can just remove it where we're kind of going around that building so we can see how the site boundary will look on this particular section. Obviously I'm doing this quite roughly and you'll want to kind of cross-reference this with any plans you're doing as well to make sure that everything lines up correctly. I'd recommend doing this as a volume in Rhino and that way you can make sure that it correctly aligns with each of your drawings as well. I don't think so. So quite quickly you can build up more and more detail in these drawings and it's very sort of straightforward just using the illustrator tools pen tools and adding extra bits on it might be that you want to add on different color layers like we did before highlighting different buildings in the background maybe you want to add sort of different colors to show different layers you might want to add on to new parts of the building so it might be that this part you want a kind of green roof layer on top for example, and let's kind of pick a, a sort of faded green color here and maybe draw this on like so as a volume. Drop it behind my section again, or maybe below my shadow as well, so we can see how that affects it. And you'll see these are all relatively simple moves, but once you start to build them up, they can be quite effective. And then as with the plan, like before, when you want to export these, when you're happy with them and you want to kind of put them on a page or on an InDesign document, we just go File, Export, Export As, save them as a PNG, and use the artboards. That's quite essential that you tick that Use Artboards option and that will export it out as a series of boards. And then we can export it from here. And I already have some I've done, so I'm going to overwrite those. Place those ones. And then you can see them here exported out as a series of images as well. I'll usually always save out as images to import into my InDesign because I just find this a lot easier to work with at that point. And the file size is a lot less than on an Illustrator file. So that was just a quick intro into making simple site sections and how to then start to diagram these up in Illustrator. In the next video, we'll be looking into this in a bit more detail and using the techniques from doing this in plan and doing this in section to have a go at setting up a 3D version of this diagram using Rhino to create the initial image and then work into that image in Illustrator again. Thanks for watching.